Yeah, good afternoon everybody. Uh, so I am a community physician, community medicine person and I was, my purpose to conduct this study was to sensitize my residents regarding this new terminology. It's prevalence and predictors of metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease among adults attending primary care physicians in southern Haryana, India. So as you know, MASLD. <coughs> Just I want to tell about this, 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 this thing. As you know, this is an overarching term and this has been coined in last June 2023 and it has been adopted in uh, 2024. And the static uh, liver disease is now umbrella term. Now we have to see whether that patient is meeting any of the five cardiometabolic risk factors. If any one of that is present, then we are labeling that. Uh, if there is no other cause of stasis, steatosis, then we are telling that that, that is a MASLD. Now one more term is there that is MET-ALD metabolic dysfunction associated with alcoholic uh, component also. So what are those five cardiometabolic risk factors? As you all know, these are the five criteria for uh, metabolic syndrome as well. When three of them are present, then we are labeling that patient as having metabolic syndrome. But any one of these risk factors is present along with the imaging or biopsy uh, diagnosed steatosis, then we are labeling that MASLD. So this is the classification of uh, now new terminology, MASLD, MET-ALD, alcoholic liver disease, specific li etiology, static liver disease and cryptogenic SLD. So the main thing is then when alcohol consumption is between 20 to 50 gram per day for female and 30 to 60 gram for uh, male, then that is alcoholic component. More than that 50 for female and more than 60 for male is alcoholic liver disease, but less than that they are coming under only pure MASLD. Less than 20 for female and less than 30 for male. Now, objective of the study was to, uh, to estimate the prevalence of MASLD and its predictors among adults is 30 years and above attending primary care physicians. The methods are the observational cross-section study was conducted during January to June 2024 and it was comprising of 170 adults and inclusion criteria included adults aged more than 30 years having at least one cardiometabolic risk factors and uh, unwilling to undergo USG abdomen. Exclusion criteria were taking 20 gram per day or 140 gram per week of alcohol. That is criteria for female. Okay, but, but we have taken this for both male and female and for more than one year and zero positive for hepatitis B and C or HIV were excluded. Those who were taking these kind of things were excluded from the study to have pure MASLD in our embed. Hepatic steatosis detected by ultrasound imaging plus one of the five cardiometric criteria was operational definition for MASLD. We, can, we did statistical analysis using multivariate logistic regression model and to ascertain the predictors of MASLD, adjusted over SESO and 95% confidence interval calculated to assess the strength of association with significance level P less than 0.05. So in the results we got, out of the 170 subjects, uh, 77 data, 45% were males and 55% were females. Mean age was 39.3 years and the prevalence of MASLD was found to be 45, that is 26.5%. So we'll see that 26.5% of the adults, those who came for any other reason, not for the MASLD, not for the liver disease, we just assess the, the, whether they are having one cardiometabolic risk factors, then we uh, made them to go undergo USG. And we could find 26.5% of them were having MASLD. What were the independent predictors of MASLD? Presence of metabolic syndrome that are more than three cardiometabolic risk factors, low aerobic uh, physical activity less than one hour per week, uh, and sleep deprivation, frequent junk food consumption, that is at least one serving for three or more days of week, and normal HDL was found to be protective for MASLD. So this is the brief and the conclusion is the problems of MASLD was substantial among adult study population. The study warrants routine use of abdominal USG as screening tool in patient coming for health center, those who are having one or more components of metabolic syndrome. Behavior change communication for calorie restriction and increased physical activity can lead to weight loss and significant improvement, improvements in MASLD among newly detected cases. So the message is whenever a patient comes to you for any reason, what we are occupied with, agar koi badaega, tabhi USG karwate even if you ask the radiologist, they will say you that they are conducting USG for only for pain abdomen. 
and the fatty liver is the incidental finding only. But whenever a patient comes to you with any one of cardiometabolic risk factor, be it increased waist circumference, be it pre-diabetes, be it hypertension or medication of hypertension, you just make that patient to undergo USG, or especially in the primary care settings. And where you can go for a further thing, that is dependent on FIB4 index. Although all of you must be aware for, of that FIB4 index. If that is more than 2.67, refer that to gastroenterologist or hepatology department. Between 1.3 to 2.67, then you have to make that patient undergo transient elastography. And less than 1.3, you can continue on.